Hello all, it's been a while, I haven't posted in a very long time, but I've gathered enough new stuff to show you that I feel like I should be sharing. Um, romaine lettuce, and uh, here we have some lalik and some coriander, and a big giant hole in the ceiling. Yes, we're no stranger to eastern winds. We had a problem with terrible eastern winds that blew off our, uh, what do you call them? The curtains, they have this roller Manuela thing that uh, got flown up into the uh, upper, upper lining and it tore a hole in them and then with the wind it blew a sail into them tearing off almost we have two pools that uh, need gonna need repair so uh, if anybody has the spare two thousand dollars that they can uh, that they can give us we'd be more than happy to accept your money just kidding but seriously if you want to support us uh, you can contact me on Facebook, Israel Hydroponics, and uh, in exchange I bring you the farm uh, updates, which I do on my spare time, either way. Uh, you know this pak choy, we just started growing it again. Uh, it's been a crazy, uh, there's a whole craze about this lachlik lettuce. Everybody's crazy about lalik now, and the butterhead, which is this thing, is no good. Even though it's wonderful and it looks great, people want the, this uh, lalik. So, lalik it is. We're growing some uh, pineapples here. I'm making experimentation with some, uh, uh, with some pineapples, unsuccessfully, but, uh, you know, I grow the lettuce, so this is what I do. And uh, another thing, we, besides storm preparation, here you see another pool that got uh, its head blown off. Uh, besides that, I want to show you something interesting that occurred to us, painfully interesting. Uh, as you see, these are Salanova red, right? So what happened during the month of November is that I forgot I didn't actually forget, I, uh, I thought it was a joke, but um, I didn't think it would be such a big deal that you have to change the growing protocol uh, during the colder months because the lettuce consumes less uh, fertilizers and it doesn't need such a concentration in the pool. So our EC, which was uh, during the summer, uh, I'm not going to say exactly the numbers, but uh, it was higher than it is, should be in the winter time. Summer crops grow fast, they grow well, and the uh, winter things take a little slower. So from uh, let's suppose this lettuce, this Salanova green takes uh, three weeks to uh, mature. It uh, in the winter it could reach up to five uh, weeks. So the biological uh, Activity slows down during winter time, and I haven't taken that into an account. So what has happened is, uh, what you see is uh, some lettuces. These are already starting to recover, and these ones are like perfect. You see, they're still growing. Uh, they're still quite young, but uh, they're and oppo as opposed to this thing, whatever this is. Uh, when your uh, concentration is too high then what happens is that the lettuce begins to deform and as you bring the values uh, closer to what you really need them to be then the lettuce starts to recover you can see it's already starting to recover it's not going to be the best uh, lettuce in the world like we used to grow but at least it was a good lesson and a good learn i just want to show you what kind of deformities i'm talking about besides the shrunken heads here um, I want to find this uh, lettuce that has the markings 
of a lettuce that has been uh, scorched by high concentration we're still uh, lowering the EC it's like a process because I don't want to drain the pool but uh, it would be looking like something like this thing like uh, I'm trying to find a good example here you see here exactly you see this head you see it's not going to develop very well as opposed to this head which is wonderful here we have a prime example you see the crusty leaves it looks like they have like a um, they're very crunchy and the lettuce if you see the, the shoot that comes out it looks like it's been scorched so this is what we were looking at it of course it done a lot of uh, damage to us in terms of loss uh, we gained information which we happily share uh, with other growers because it seems like everybody had the same issue while transitioning to winter growing here in November st uh, winter starts at uh, around November and ends at, in March so we figured it out pretty quickly and uh, so we shared this knowledge with everybody and uh, I'm not sure how many people believe us but uh, this pool which had a lower EC than the rest and uh, this one as well recovered really really quickly so these ones are ready see beautiful heads no no crustiness of the leaves no scorching no deformation uh, this variety of lettuce this Salanova is a known problematic lettuce it has a problem with uh, with uh, genetic deformities so even if you're perfect pool still you have example like this heads that are uh, one eighth of a raft one eighth of a tray um, doesn't occur all the time if you're perfect you're gonna keep those numbers at least at 5% it could raise up to 10% depending on uh, the grower uh, the seedling supplier I've spoken to the seedling supplier of ours which is Chishtil are the best in Israel and I explained to him my theory about uh, winter growing and opposed to summer and uh, I think I convinced him that there's a pretty good chance that uh, if you use too much fertilizer then these ones you're gonna get lettuces just like these ones which have been transferred from pool from the problematic pool and you see the difference I mean look at this it's not they these ones weren't growing this pool so you see the better the good ones are most of them are good and you see these two so anyways it was a good lesson a good learn what else is new here besides our broken ceiling? Oh, there's a big hole over there too. So stuff flew on our uh, greenhouse and it's, even though it's sunset and it's amazing now and uh, it's very nice, we need to fix it as soon as possible because the rains are coming and we don't want our lettuce to get wet. And so anyways, uh, marketing another information a good one uh, when you're working with a problematic client it's always good to diversify always good to find uh, other customers and uh, be quick on your feet like now every, nobody wants those butterheads and the Salanova uh, everybody wants Lalik and uh, unfortunately there's a shortening of seeds uh, that was worldwide and uh, but it's coming back so we were like uh, we were downsizing our ability to take lalik because there was a loss of seed a short of, of seeds but uh, i've recently heard that there's uh, uh, more seeds are coming and lalik is going to be taking the cake uh, but romaine is also a good crop that's always been uh, a favorite of mine so ask me questions and uh, 
feel free to send me money for fixing our greenhouse two thousand dollars that's the price and uh, i'll be much appreciated and if you have any subject you want me to touch on besides uh, on exactly what we fertilize and how to get cheap fertilizer i can't help you with that sorry it just you know every country has its own uh, fertilizing uh, uh, production and luckily in israel uh, there's no short of uh, fertilizer producers so we're not ukraine we're not holland we're, we're nobody's like enforcing us yet hopefully not never but uh, i know what's coming we all know what's coming a uh, food crisis they're designing this food crisis so everybody would be dependent on the government to, started with the corona now it's moving to climate crisis and all sorts of inventions like that i don't want to get into it because i don't want to stir up a political discussion in the comment section which is fairly empty and i don't want to keep it empty i want it to be like a, a good place for discussion about hydroponics and how to maintain the greenhouse so it doesn't break down on you what I learned from the storm is that you have to secure your uh, curtains. If you have curtains that are facing the east or anywhere you live where the winds are coming from the desert, like Syria, Jordan, which uh, screwed us over uh, with their uh, desert winds, then uh, you need to secure those uh, curtains so they won't fly to the roof and create even a bigger problem than you anticipated that will ever happen in your greenhouse. Nobody wants to come ho to come to work and see their greenhouse is completely roofless. And uh, it sucks. But uh, every time we encounter a problem, we adapt, we think what we can do, we focus on, uh, on lesson learns, and we become better every year. Every year we increase ourselves uh, uh, with knowledge, with expertise, with a uh, good understanding of what we're doing and how to do things right. And that's why everybody wants to work with us. Because even though we have this greenhouse, which is not, you know, I didn't design the entire greenhouse uh, in terms, there are a lot of things I would have done differently. And we got this greenhouse just as it is and we had to work with what we got uh, but uh, facing problems is uh, is a good thing to to establish yourself as a leading uh, know-how and an expert in what you do and then when you get the chance to do something right or somebody who says hey i want a greenhouse and uh, you seem like you know what you're doing then you take all the lessons you learned uh, while uh, working on your uh, tryout version of the greenhouse like I wouldn't done uh, two um, decks like you see there's a top layer of this greenhouse and a bottom one and it goes down like you don't need to uh, you need a flat surface that's the best and uh, there are a lot of things I would have done different uh, I would be doing different here but you only learn it through trial and error and also by uh, experience so there's a, a lot of uh, knowledge to gain by doing the wrong stuff. When you know what not to do, then it shortens the distance of what right to do, what's the right thing to do. Hey, look at this here, what we got here. It's a dragonfly. We had a sad situation with these dragonflies, these poor uh, murderous creatures that are, uh, they don't do anything bad to a crop besides killing uh, insects which I really, really like. The, the problem with them is that uh, during our transition to winter, I guess they assumed it's going to be summer because some days are hotter than the rest. So they climbed out of their, uh, 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 the nymphs climbed out of the water. They are grown inside our pools. They climbed onto the leaves and they sprouted out as uh, dragonflies. And what happens is then they came the cold nights and I see them flying around and they have this weird behavior to them. And then I realize, hey, it's not their season. They should come around in summer, 
now it's winter and they have to experience the cold nights here i come here in the morning and i see them like almost frozen and i have to shake them up to get them to fly so they won't die or so they can leave this one extra day where they eat their entire body weight with the uh, insects that are flying around sometimes now that we have this ceiling help us out please and uh, but they are like not doing very well in this cold climate they weren't prepared for winter they thought they had summer they came out surprised it's actually winter now they get uh, they die off really really fast but uh, in the summer when uh, winter ends then they will come strong and start uh, doing our biological control which we enjoy so lalik Lalik is the future of lettuce for now, the undisputed king right now, everybody wants Lalik, everybody needs their Lalik, they're calling us like all the time, asking us to save the Lalik for them, because this breed of lettuce is like something out of this, it's so unique, it's like crunchy and it's easy to cut like Salanova, but Salanova it's like taste is like very I wouldn't say very bitter, but it's like bitter. But this one is, has a crunch in it. It goes great in burgers, in uh, salads. People just are loving this breed of lettuce. And it's, uh, we grow eight in a tray. It's 20 centimeters apart. And it's, uh, it's a very good breed. It's a very stable breed. It's a very high, res uh, it resisted the problem we had with the high concentration of, uh, uh, of uh, fertilizer in the pools. It's very, very adaptable and it grows super, like almost no loss, almost no problem at all with insects or whatever. And pak choy, on the other hand, is a problematic. It's the highest dense uh, plant we can grow. We actually grow 12 instead of 8. In a raft but the problem with it it attracts so many insects they are crazy about it you see these holes i think it's because of those uh, uh what do you call those flies that lay eggs and they they just i can't see them i can't find them but if you're gonna grow pak choy in, in such a large quantity and you don't want to suffer the loss then you have to use like organic spray or stuff like that neem guard whatever um, there's also an ingredient called tamartic. Tamartic is super wonderful. It's organic, it, uh, it's against uh, uh, aphids. So if you're having aphids, look for tamartic, T-A-M-A-R, tech, I think T-E-K, need to look it up. But it's, uh, it's, it, it's very organic and it's actually really good. So, uh, Pak choy is a problematic uh, crop, even though it's very high density, you can grow, you can grow it like 15 centimeters apart uh, between plants, which is really good. We also have in the back there, behind the, the pak choy, we have a little jam. Anybody heard about little jam, the lettuce? We also try to grow it uh, 15 uh, in a tray, actually 12 in a tray, sorry, not uh, 15, also the pak choy is 12. So we're trying to grow that also uh, in a, a, the same capacity and try to see if we can grow them uh, well. We have a customer that wants small heads, three in a, in a pack. Uh, it goes to restaurants and stuff like that. Um, we had a visitor today actually from another restaurant. Uh, another restaurant and it looks they like they like the what they see and they want to work with us so when you grow well and people are attracted to you like the uh, like naturally they find us and they just show up here and they just want to see and then they're like excited about incorporating it in their catering the restaurant and all of that so it's fun it's a great and uh, so help us out if you want, and I'm sure to answer almost all of your questions, not the ones that are regarding uh, silly questions like uh, what do you use for fertilizer or stuff like that. Pre try to be like professional 
and uh, see if you need anything like specific that you want me to touch on and I'll uh, help you out with that anyways so I'm logging off this has been fun my name is Iran and uh, see you on the next time after we fix the roof I'll maybe post another update and uh, have a great week see you